Hello, hello, and welcome back. Um, today we're going to do another acrylic series. Um, due to the success of my last video, apparently you guys like the fact that I'm trying to teach you guys how to paint without being too tight and loosen up on your details and showing you how uh, you can do a great painting without having to add too, too many details. You don't have to make it look picture perfect and you could make these paintings pretty quick. Now, these paintings that I do for you guys are usually about an hour, hour, 10 minutes, you know. Uh, I do very little editing. It just goes to show you can knock out an eight by 10 in an hour, if even less really, if you really wanted to. So what I'm really trying to do is build the basic, the basic building blocks. And to start with that, I'm showing you a uh, painting that are going to be very, hopefully, simple for you to do. But what the main thing I want to drive home and what I'm really trying to achieve is to build your confidence. You build your confidence in what you do. Once you get that part, once you get past that part, then everything becomes easier and you feel free to experiment and then really take it to the next level, okay? And you can become as tight or as loose as you want with your paintings. I mean, that's up to you, that's, that's your choice. I just paint loose because I like to paint loose. I like the feeling, the movement that it creates in a painting, okay? And by building on those basic foundations of loose painting, as you get more confident, you can make the painting even tighter and tighter and tighter to your liking, all right? But the thing is, let's build that basic building block, that foundation of just getting your confidence that you can actually do this, all right? So let's, let's start the show. So I have an eight by 10. Uh, this is a canvas panel. Okay, this is by, maybe I should turn it this way. Centurion. They sell them at Jerry's Autorama, and actually, you can find them on Amazon through Jerry's. They're in my description, and all the brushes that I'm going to be using, everything's in the link in the description and the paint as well. So, this is an 8x10. So, let me just show you the brushes as well. And I'll be talking about the brushes as I go along and what size I'm using. So, these are the Princeton Catalyst uh, Poly Tips. Well, it's kind of hard to focus, but you'll find them in the description. Really, really, really nice brush to paint acrylic with because they hold just the right amount of water. Okay, I have an assortment of these. Ooh, one paintbrush that dried. So much for taking care of that. Um, also, I have a couple of these little cheap ones that you can find on Michaels. Um, Royal Lang Nickel Zen Z93W. All right, these are all synthetic brushes. They're nice, they make nice sharp edges. But my main bad boys are gonna be the Princetons. All right, let's get on with the show. Okay, uh, let me draw out the painting first. So, this is what we're gonna be doing. All right. So I'm gonna try to really help you out with the basics and show you how to paint this hopefully fast, loose, and you can go back to that painting and make it as tight as you want or add to it, subtract from it. Practice is what's gonna get you where you wanna be if you keep practicing. It does not come easy, okay? You had to fall many times while you were crawling and trying to walk. Same idea, okay? You're not gonna just get up out of the womb and start walking. All right. Oh, that, was, that was a pathetic analogy, but I think you got the gist of this. All right, a quick drawing. I'm gonna use little cerulean. Oh, let me tell you my colors, duh. I have alizarin crimson, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and titanium white. And the reason why I'm using only these colors and I'm not adding yellow, because I see a lot of blues in this painting, and a lot of grays. So to make some nice grays, you could use uh, ultramarine blue, cerulean blues with your earth colors, okay? Uh, you have, you know, uh, a warmer 
uh, earth color and you got a cooler earth color here in your uh, burnt sienna. So, uh, all right. And uh, you'll get to see as, I we, as we go along. Sometimes I explain too much at the beginning, but it's, it's nice when you get to see what I'm doing here. All right, so we're gonna go a little bit. You don't wanna go center. Makes for a boring painting. You always wanna go above center or below center, all right? Think about your uh, rules of thirds. You could look that up online and you can see, you know, what it's all about. But let me do this. And the trick to making a straight line is to follow your brush with your eye. The whole head moves with the brush. You'll pretty much make a straight line all the time. So let me see, it's gonna be, the sky is really not interesting, so. This is gonna be the trees. And the boat's gonna be somewhere here. Angled off this way a little bit more. There you go. So it doesn't make everything look 2D, just making it straight. Just angle it off a little bit that way. Okay, and then we have the sail. And then we're going to have all the trees on this side. So now, I've had a post of uh, a viewer that posted like, you know, I should have started with the, on my last video, I should start with the sky first and then do the rest of whatever, the rest of the painting. Uh, that all depends on the style of painting you're doing. And it all depends on your, your preference, your style, and your, like I said, your preference. You don't always have to start with the sky. Now in this particular situation, I will start with some of my darks here, but the tree, the plants that are gonna go here, I'm gonna put in last. Reason being, I don't want, uh, cause I'm gonna be making some soft edges. If I paint the tree, let me show you the picture. I should explain this better. This is gonna be put in last. Typically I would put this in first, but the thing is, because it's in the foreground, and it's got the blurred effect. If I put this in first, what happens is that once I paint around it, okay, the lines are gonna be hard edge. And if I try to paint above, uh, re go back on the second layer and do uh, over these darks right here, then it's gonna kinda look funky. It's not gonna, it's gonna have a dark and then it's gonna have a lighter side and it's just not gonna look right. So I'm gonna do this last. So I'll be able to soften the edges all in one, uh, all in one shot, okay? That's how I'm gonna attack this uh, painting. So as you'll see as we progress, okay? All right, so let me start with this background blue just to get my values right. So I'm gonna use some ultramarine blue. Little bit of, let's say, sienna. Maybe a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit more sienna. Actually, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. Just a tip. Let me see, let me test that. That's a little bit better. Okay. All right. Now remember, this is acrylics. Look at that, see, just putting on the paint really loosely, not even Not even concentrating on details here. Because to me, that right now does not matter. It's a loose painting. It's great for when you're out, plein air. You want to do a quick sketch of what you're seeing. A little bit more burnt sienna. Maybe a 
little bit more ultramarine. This should be almost dry already, almost. I can still go over it, this is not like oils. Here, a little bit darker. Make some trees. This, this side here goes up a little bit higher. Let's give a variety of shapes to this. Because we could sculpt that background a little bit more. Okay. Now, and I can make this darker. So right now, my value, I'm keeping it like a middle value. And when I say value is how dark or how light a color is. A value of one would be like white, a value of 10 will be like black. So I'm somewhere like five, six, seven, perhaps in that area. That gives me the liberty to go darker or, you know, go a little bit lighter if I want. But the reason why I want to stay a little bit on the lighter side is because sometimes if I go darker, I'll have the opportunity to keep these, um, how should I say, these translucent colors show through because it's hard to have these kind of translucent colors if this was all dark and then I went lighter on it, the colors would be more chalky because I had to add white to the, the pigment to tint it to make it lighter. Here I have the natural canvas and the natural true slit, true, um, translucency of the color showing that white behind there. So it's letting light go through the color. So it's, it's a lot more crisp, a lot more vibrant color, as opposed to if I was to add white to replicate this color. So that's why I did it like that. That's why I do a middle value. So when I add darks, I could either go over it, you know, make it lighter or darker if I want. I could push and pull with that. I hope I didn't confuse you with that. Basically, it's just giving me flexibility is what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the boat for now. I'm just gonna work on the basics. I just wanna cover the whole entire painting. So now, I should be using a larger brush than this, but it's okay. Um, all right, for now, for the background, I'm gonna use white. Let's use a little bit of cerulean blue. A hint of crimson. Maybe a little bit more, because I need to make more of this paint. A hint of burnt sienna. Make it like this cool. You can see the contrast difference between these two colors, okay? So that's how I know it's gonna work. Really loose, okay? Make more of that. So I made really a gray down purple by using blue, red, and a little bit of sienna. Too much red. And more blue. More blue. Lots of white. Close enough. Maybe a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit of crimson. All right. Now at this point, this is only the first stage. I may go back over it for a second coat, first layer should I say. I may go back and do a second coat over this. I don't know yet. We'll see if it really needs it. 
So while I'm there, now let me see, I can shape this even a little bit more. Making these little pocket hole of trees while the color is still wet because the problem is with acrylics is trying to match the color that you just put on there without drying it too dark on you or now if I don't like the shape of this I could always go back with this ultramarine and burnt umber and add to it and reshape it and tighten it up Ooh. okay well I guess I'm gonna have to while I was talking I was not paying attention and this is what happens okay so I'm gonna fix that not a problem you get to see how to fix an issue okay all right so this is dry let me go back over that actually I'm gonna use a smaller Now, you know what, let me go continue with the larger brush because that's gonna limit me from getting too, um, too tight with my painting. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, maybe a little bit of white, let me see. See how much darker I can get this? And I'm going to let some of this lighter blue show through. I'm going to use that to my advantage here in a second, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically glazing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use... Uh, let me fix this area here. There, let me give this a little bit more interest. So it's not all like in the same height. I want to vary the height of the trees. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this for a few few minutes just for it to dry. Because after that, I'm gonna go with the cerulean blue and a little bit of white and per and burnt sienna, and make kind of like uh, give a, a representation that's a little bit further back. And you'll see what I mean by that. I'm just. Uh, keeping you ahead of the game slightly so you can understand what's to come and why I'm doing what I'm doing currently. All right, so let me see. I'm actually gonna use this color, a little bit transparent there, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit more blue so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna this is gonna be the highest part you kind of want to follow the contour and my brush is pretty damp now let me go a little bit further down now watch now I'm just gonna go slightly I'm barely I'm barely like um, putting pressure on my brush here and I'm barely wiping away here because I want to give it a soft edge otherwise it's just going to be rigid the edges are going to be very rigid and remember this is only the first stage and you'll see what happens next Actually, I can go a little bit further. I just wet my brush, that's all I did, and then just... There you go. Now, let me start with the water, which is gonna be a little bit darker than my sky color. Remember, if your sky color is dark, your water's gonna be light. 
if your sky color is light, your water is going to be a little bit darker. Always remember that as far as reflections go. The subject, if the subject is dark, its reflection is going to be lighter. If your subject is light, your reflection is going to be darker. Remember that about reflections. All right, so now let me put more white here, maybe perhaps a little bit more. Blue, a little bit of crimson. See the value is not too far off here. And let me see, maybe a little bit more crimson just to make it a little bit more gray. Okay. So let me go up and down. And the reason is, and you'll see in a second, I'm just trying to follow the general shape of uh, the general movement of the water. And I know you saw me put this shadow line here, and we're going to go back over this in a few minutes. So I'm just going up and down, as you can see, I'm not really being too... And quickly go back over it while your brush is still damp and paint is still wet. And uh, just go back and forth just to kind of smooth it out. And then at the base here, we're going to get a little bit darker, more in the blues. And more on the purple side and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna more white perhaps even actually cerulean blue more of a cooler blue here so let me see add more water to my brush real quick real quick real quick even if you have to wet your brush just a little bit more to make it flow easier there you go now we have a gradients but it's not too tight you see what I mean it's not like perfectly blended right it's not perfectly blended and that's exactly what I want I don't want it to be perfectly blended I just want to have that feel of movement you know so you can tell the brush you can almost tell an artist who the artist is just by looking at the brush strokes and how the painting was done. You could just like you know, you could tell Van Gogh is Van Gogh, you could tell Monet is Monet. It's just the kind of strokes and the style of painting. Eventually you will develop your own, but you just need to build that confidence in the basics to do so. Alright, I'm switching over. So now this was a number six flat. Now I'm gonna go with a let me see. Uh, I'm gonna go with a number two filbert. And I'm gonna go back and start working on this uh, tree line over here, okay? And uh, the sky, I don't know if I really wanna rework the sky or not. I could, but we'll see. Right now I'm just gonna work with the tree line. So I'm gonna use cerulean blue. Perhaps a little burnt umber. A little bit of white. Just go over some of the tops of these. Probably more cerulean blue. Maybe a 
little bit more white. Now you gotta remember, in acrylics your paint will dry a little bit darker. See, I'm just not being careful. I'm just going over the top of these tree lines, even adding a little bit more trees, just like, you know, non-specific. And even if I want to mix this color, make it add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it, pure ultramarine blue, I can do that. Watch. So I get a varied, a varied look and almost mixed color effect you know like some cooler blues some warmer blues now it pushes that tree line in the background even more so now let me see so now I'm gonna do that tree line again, here, the reflection in the water. So let me see, let me just go back with my bigger brush. Actually, I'm gonna use this flat right here. It's got nice sharp edges. So let me go back and let me use ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of uh, cerulean blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of white, because I don't want it too dark. Put some water on my brush, make it nice and loose. Let me see what we're going to get here. I'm varying the stroke of my brush. Sometimes I'm using the, the sharp end, sometimes a flat end. I'm just varying a little bit. Wet my brush. And I'm not putting any paint on my brush, just going back and forth here with some with my brush here, just back and forth. I just put in the water and then kind of soften the edges. Now, there are some lighter highlights in the water as well. And we're gonna put that in a second. So, let me see there. Let's put some highlights. Don't be afraid to use your finger. And 
see now it just looks like and I could put some like this and feather it out use my finger just like that you see while the paint is damp and wet there you go now you have some highlights Okay, about the sky, uh, I decided I'm going to go and put another coat on the sky here. Let's do that. Let's replicate the colors. Lots of white, ultramarine blue, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of sienna. I know it looks dark, but I want to make enough paint that I can go in one shot. Lots of white, let's see. Perfect. Put enough water to remove my paint. And it's okay if some of the background color shows through because they're about the approximate value, about approximate, uh, yeah, on a value scale, they're about the same. I'm not too worried about the background showing up. Here I can make any adjustments that I want. If there's some tree lines I didn't like, I could just... There you go. Perfect. It's not too uniformed. And actually, you know, Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's add some like, kind of like these pines back there or something. Make sure your brush has enough water on there just to They're really nondescript. You don't want them evenly spaced apart, you know, you don't want too much of a uh, of a symmetrical look to your painting. Let me add fix a few spots here. get on with the boat now okay this is acrylic of course this is pretty much already all dry now if you're not good at drawing with your um, brushes okay one thing you can do is use chalk or vinyl charcoal make a light sketch let me see there you 
go. Just a light sketch showing me approximately where my boat's going to be. All right. Actually, I'm going to move it because I got that tree right here. See, I could erase it. Move it a little bit more. This way, so when the cell goes there, it's not going to be aligned with the tree. That's the reason why I did that. Okay. So, now I'm going to use a small filbert. Because all I need was just the indication. I'm going to make a nice dark. So I'm going to make ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of crimson and a burnt umber. Let me mist my paint. Keep them nice and wet. So let me see, let me just draw this out. It's going to be If you want a nice sharp line, keep your brush a little bit on the wet side. You'll have crisper lines. Just like that. So now let me make the shadow of the boat. And just dry brush it. I just rinsed my brush off a little bit and I'm just gonna pull these colors down wipe my brush off real quick and then just like and you can use your fingers don't be afraid to use your fingers If you messed up, just take water on your brush and then just wipe away. All right, so this should be almost dry. Let me put another coat on that. That's what I like about acrylics. Successive coats could be added on. There you go. Make that a little bit darker. We could do the same thing here. Almost like you're doing the watercolors. It gives it that kind of effect. There you go. Now for, let me see, the top part, the main cabin, I could use white, make more of this color right here. White, a little bit of um, alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of uh, cerulean blue, more white, and a little bit of sienna. And the reason why I'm going to put sienna, I really want to mute the color because there's going to be a highlight in there somewhere.
So I'm just doing the approximate shape of what I'm seeing on the boat. Okay. And this side is a little bit of a shadow side, so it's going to be a little bit more on the blue side. So let's go a little bit of ultramarine blue with this color. Okay, let me put that white highlight and you're gonna see how it's gonna pop. It should at least. There was something in front of that boat just like that. Now you see the highlights just showing. There's something dark in the back of that boat. I don't know what it is. Maybe like some kind of a buoy flotation, whatnot. All right, now let me make the sail. This is a liner brush or a rigger brush. This is a number one zero, I believe. So let's make this out. I hope I don't screw this one up. Sometimes those are some of my weaker, my weakest part is making a straight line with the cell. I know I told you how to make a straight line, but when you're doing a um, vertical line, it's a different story. So I don't have a mall stick. Let me see. I have a piece of, uh, furring strip. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that. Just put it against there. Use your hands to follow. that with my fingers there you go so it looks more faded than what's on top even use a wet brush here just to add water to it and fade it out some more I can do the same thing with the top here let me erase some of this if I can. I think it's a little bit too late for that one. Oh well. Oh, maybe not. There you go. Now let's make the cell back here. Same color. Just look at what you're doing, look at the direction of your sail like this. And then, you know, it's got, you know. Perhaps I should have done it a little bit lower. It's my pain. see a little bit of burnt umber maybe more cerulean blue maybe a little bit of valizan crimson make that darker because it's in a shadow side so it's going to be pretty dark And I 
I see a couple faded windows in there somewhere in here so use this color wipe some of it off just perfect just like that basically all I did was use this color you add a lot of water on my brush and I just used it on the side here just to make it a glaze make a glaze mixture excuse me a glaze mixture and I just went right over this wet uh, this dry paint now I got this glazing effect all right so I think we're done with the boat all right we're gonna leave that as is and I'm fine with the uh, with the tree line back here. Um, actually, I wanted to make the tree line maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make the tree line a little bit higher. Why not? I'm going to use a, a round brush. Just goes to show what you can do with the acrylics. If I change my mind, I can just do whatever I want to. Hold on. Why not? It's my painting. You know, that's the creative process. You can do, add whatever you want. I just think it would look better if my tree line was just a little bit higher. And look, I'm using a fat brush here just to There you go. I think I'm a little bit happy with that. Really nondescript. And all I did was use a lizard, um, uh, cerulean blue and burnt sienna. Make it almost like this greenish, garish green color. There, I'm happy with that. And the reason why I was able to mix pretty good is because I... Um, I added a little bit of white, so it made the color a little bit more opaque to hide some of the straight lines that were there before. And some of the, sometimes if their lines are irregular in the background here, the initial base color is irregular, I will let the top colors be a little bit more transparent. It's okay, it just adds a little bit more visual texture, you know. Now if the line was like pretty straight, I wouldn't want that, it just looks wrong. Then I would either make some irregular lines uh, with you know an opaque color and just to fix that issue all right now that we've got that done let's start with the branches here let me show you the branches okay now am I gonna make it that big I don't know yet Let me just ad lib and see where we go from here. Let's just do a big pile of dark color. Let's just make a big pile of cerulean blue, crimson, umber. Okay, let's see where we go from here. Now there's a big center mass. Right here. And I'm gonna twirl the brush around a little bit just to make the edges soft. I don't want hard edges. And I want thick paint to achieve this because the paint's gonna stay wet longer by making it thick, okay? There's some branches here. And I'm gonna soften the edges there, just. All 
So this is just the big mass first. And then I see that I have a long running mass here of tree life here. Use my fingers a little bit just to let's see. Maybe I should use like a wet brush and just round off. Now I'm using like a a damp brush to smooth out the edges. And I can make it darker eventually. I can always go back over what I just did. See? Again, making it darker. Soften the edges. There's another big center mass here. I probably have been more beneficial using a round brush to do this. Okay, I can still do it and watch how. Stick with me, guys. Stick with me. Okay. Even though this is close and dark, what I'm gonna do now is use my big fat round brush here. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a greenish tinge. And how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna put cerulean blue, I mean ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A lot of burnt sienna. That's gonna give it like a greenish tinge. If you had yellow, you could actually add the hint of yellow, but I don't want to do that. There you go, just like that. It just adds another layer. Let's even add some cerulean blue here as I'm getting closer towards the bottom give it more of a greenish tinge and the reason why it's all clumped together is because it's the picture is out of focus in the foreground so everything kind of looks clumped Just a little bit off the edges, just like that. Let me just, I'm letting some of the colors go around the edges because you have this hard solid color in the center and on the edges, it's almost like a glazing, like a thick glazing towards the edge and you can see the actual uh, new color that's being put on there. And then just wipe it off if you have to. Wipe some of it off. Well, this one's a little bit too late, but it's okay. There you go. So you, now you know it's basically um, some sort of a tree line, but a lot of cerulean. 
burnt sienna. Give it more of a cooler garish green. There you go. Give it some 3D effect that's not just like one unilateral color, solid. Show that this tree has variations to it. There you go. I did this painting under an hour. And that's without editing. I'm at the 56 minute mark without editing. But I will edit because you don't need to hear all the swishing sound of that water. So let me put some tree branches here like some let me see ultramarine blue burnt umber if you want to give it that blur effect just wipe it off there you go Boom. Now I'm just going to sign my name. And we can call this done. There you go, removing the excess paint. Folks, there's your final painting. A quick, impressionistic style. And uh, just show you what you can do with just one, two, three, four, five colors. All right, some blue, some red, and some burnt umber. You can make an actual painting. Very quick, very simple, straight to the point. There's nothing that's tight about this painting. There's a lot of movement. You can see everything's pretty much irregular here. Um, and that's really what I wanna teach you, that you can just go ahead with confidence and do a simple painting in a very loose style without detail. Just give hints of detail. And I use pretty much a lot of it was, you know, big brushes, you know, big brush, you know, and this big round here so if you have any questions about the materials that i use or techniques that i that i showed you hey just leave them in the comment section i will really appreciate it. and i'm pretty prompt about answering your questions and um, i hope that uh, i really was able to help you embark on this new journey of yours so let me put an anchor line here oops
So I really hope I was able to help you. Again, guys, thank you as always for your support and all the love and uh, keeping my channel alive. It's because of you that I'm doing this and I'm just paying it forward, teaching my knowledge, what I've learned, so you can become a better painter and hopefully, you know, get some pride out of selling some of your artwork, you know? Show people that, hey, this can be done. If I can do it, you can do it. And you can do this. So I just showed you quick and simple. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next episode. Again, thank you. And thank you for all those that have been donating. Uh, I am very, very grateful for some of your donations for these tutorials. I do take time out of my day just to do this for you and, you know, pay it forward to teach you what I know so that you can go out there and have fun doing the same thing that you love. All right, guys, have a great day.